Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome to Central Kentucky Living. I'm excited for today's video because it might interest a wide variety of different kinds of viewers today who are looking to purchase a home in the Central Kentucky area, all up the I-65 strip from the Elizabethtown area down to Bowling Green. But specifically today, we are covering eight, yes, eight of what we think are some of the greatest, I don't say best, greatest, best, whatever, subdivisions near the Glendale area. So whether you're coming to work at the new Ford battery plant in Glendale, or you just wanna live just outside of Elizabethtown a little bit, or even if you work in Bowling Green and just want something maybe a little closer to um, that area, whether it's a by 65 somewhere out in the country or just south of Elizabethtown. Either way, we've got eight great subdivisions coming up for you right now. And yes, Jarrett is with me today, so you will be seeing his lovely face as well. So let's get started. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the introduction. My name is Val Hardesty, my husband is Jarrett, and we are a married realtor team in the Central Kentucky area. Welcome to the channel. And if you're looking to reach out to someone, you wanna know more about this area, you're coming to this area and you need to find a home, please reach out to us. Our information's in the link below. going to give you a quick video neighborhood tour of each of these subdivisions and of course break down some of the basic criteria that we normally deliver to you in our neighborhood tours which are things like lot size, square footage, average price, and recent sales in these communities so you know exactly what you're looking at. These eight subdivisions have a good range of price point and whether some are older and some are brand new. So there's a wide variety here. Now I have to say, of course, in this area, you can choose to live in a subdivision or there are plenty of homes that are not actually in a subdivision with sidewalks, you know, an entrance sign or an HOA, and you can pick a house on a piece of property just out in the country somewhere. This area does offer that too. But today we're showing you eight subdivisions because, well, number one, they're just easier to record. We just can't like go out to the country and just film people's homes, you know, in a, in a 50 mile radius. So subdivisions are easier to film and this brings you eight great choices so you can look at the area and just see what it looks like. Cause I'm sure if you're not here yet, you love to know this and this information can be useful. So if you see one and you're on the internet searching somewhere, like let's say Zillow for instance, and it's not in a subdivision and you wanna know more and you wanna see what this area looks like, if you are one of our exclusive clients, of course, we do go the extra mile and take the time to go out there and video it for you and show you what that area looks like so you can visualize it even sometimes before you get here. Hey guys, long time no see. Uh, I am still here, I still exist. I've been busy, so just sorry for the temporary absence, if you will. So let's jump right into these subdivisions. So my first subdivision is Oxmoor Village. Now this is what I kind of call, and there's lots of these little neighborhoods around, it's like sprinkled out the countryside of Kentucky, but they're like one street neighborhoods. So I put in a street, build houses on both sides of the street, and then when I get to the street, they're done. We see those quite a bit around, especially once you get outside of some of the bigger cities. So to kind of show you where Oxmoor Village is, and this is why I wanted to show you like what I talk about a one street neighborhood. So if you follow my mouse here in the middle of the screen, this is Oxmoor, Oxmoor Village. So it's literally a one street in and out neighborhood. What's really cool about this is this is Glendale. 
So if you work it forward, this is Oxmore Village. Come down here, and this is Blue Oval Battery Park. So you kind of see it. Not far at all, right down the road. And then, you know, if you zoom out a little more, you know, it's not too far from E-Town. So you can either go right up Glendale Road, which is normally what I do. And then you can be in E-Town in like 15, 20 minutes to about anything you want to do. Or you can come down, hit the interstate, and go up. So, again, this is one of those subdivisions. Things do turn over in there, but it's because it's just, a, there's only maybe 20, 20 houses in there, give or take. There, there's not a ton of ton, ton, ton of turnover. But if you're interested in something like that, you just got to let us know so we can keep an eye out for it. Oxmoor Village is really close to Glendale. Um, it used to have a Glendale address. They closed the Glendale Post Office. I think they might be opening it back up. Don't hold me to that. Could go either way. So, um, it has an E-Town address now, but it used to have a Glendale e address. So kind of, you know, kind of keep that in mind with some of these subdivisions with the E-Town address, just because they say E-Town for Elizabethtown doesn't mean they're necessarily in Elizabethtown. But all the houses in Oxmoor Village, um, they were built in the early 2000s. These are kind of more affordable homes they've built. Um, there's only been two sales in there in the last two years. So just, you know, it's not something that turns over a ton. We wanted to show you this neighborhood just to kind of show you what we talk about, like when some of these smaller subdivisions, things like these do come up. You just have to be ready when they do come up. The two cells in that I have for Oxmoor Village are in that 240 to 370 price range. And so I know that's a big gap, but the 240 was a 1500 square foot house on a ramp, on a, on a crawl space, you know, it's Cape Cod style house with a two car attached garage. And then the 340 house was, I mean, it was, Literally, I'm 3,000 square feet. So um, that's kind of like the big house in the back, if you will. But so, it, but that subdivision is a lot more affordable than some. Um, nice, nice little area, acre lots, mostly acre lots, all in that kind of 1,500 to 3,000 square foot range as far as, as how big they are. Great subdivision, super well located at the Glendale. The next subdivision is located about halfway between Glendale and E-Town. Super easy to commute to Glendale. Super, so if you're working at the Ford factory, really close, if you gotta work in E-Town, also really close. It's a really just a great little subdivision. Um, it's called Brentwood. All right, so this subdivision is Brentwood. So Brentwood's a little bigger subdivision, and it's a little more expensive houses. There's a little more turnover in here. When you look at Brentwood, Brentwood, the Brentwood subdivision is not far. It's like halfway between E-Town and, uh, and the Blue Oval Park. So. Brentwood here, you would just come down and the Blue Oval Park Battery Park is right here. 10, 15 minutes, you can be to the Ford plant or if you don't work at Ford and you're interested in, you know, you work in E-Town, even if you work at Fort Knox, you're only maybe 30 minutes to Fort Knox. So Brentwood was built again in the early 2000s. So these houses are all brick on one acre lots, give or take. Most of what you see in there is going to have a basement underneath of it. In the last two years, we've had three cells in the 250 to 520 price range. It's no HOA, so um, you know it's you know you can kind of do. There's restrictions, but you know there's no HOA, so you're able to kind of do. You know, if you want to put up a shed or something, you know, you don't really have to get permission to do that. So if you're going to build a garage, it's just to, you know, meet the restrictions for the neighborhood. So Brentwood has most of those lots in there are one acre lots or some bigger lots or some a little bit smaller, but they all roughly come around one acre. So my next subdivision is right across the street from Brentwood. Um, it's a little newer, mostly built around 2010. They're still actually building a few custom houses in there now. This subdivision is priced between 450 and 550. That's just kind of what they do in there. There's been, again, just a handful of sales, a couple of sales in the last couple of years, uh, 450 to 550. Um, great subdivision, the biggest difference between Beckley Woods and Brentwood, the last subdivision is Beckley Woods has an HOA and they all have side load garages where, where Brentwood and it's no HOA and they have front load garages. Um, 
Beckley Woods is a little nicer. It has a nice walking trail that goes around in the subdivision. So it's a great area. It's a great, it's a great neighborhood. I know several people live in there and they all love it. So again, that neighborhood was built in 2010, you know, really 2005 to 2010 is when they started and they've been building since then. And there's still a few lots left in there and they're still building a few custom homes. Okay, the Four Seasons subdivision. Okay, so here we have Elizabeth Town. Right here is Four Seasons. And if you scroll down, like you're gonna go down I-65 here, here's Glendale. And the new Ford battery plant is going to be, so this is like Dollar General, all the antique shops of downtown Glendale. And the Petro Center right off I-65 and the new Ford battery plant is about right here. Here's the subdivision right here. And you're really close to Western Kentucky Parkway. And then of course, from the Glendale area, um, Glendale is about 45 minutes, maybe 50 down to um, Warren County or the Bowling Green area, if you prefer that area as well. This one is located right off New Glendale Road. It's very close to I-65, and it's actually a really popular neighborhood where people are coming and going a lot. There are several homes that are always up for sale each year in this subdivision, and I think it's because there's such a wide variety of different homes here. So when you pull into the subdivision at first, you're going to see some of the older homes. The subdivision started back in the 1990s, and then of course, as you move on into the subdivision and near the back, that's where you're gonna see some of the newer homes. And those have been built from the 90s all the way up to like 2018, so pretty new. So in this subdivision last year, from January 2022 to January 2023, there were five that sold. Those houses sold in the price ranges of 231.5 up to 492.8. So again, um, reflecting the differences of types of homes in this community. These ranged in square footage from 1395 up to 2154, and that's above ground. So some of them don't have basements, but some of them do. And so some of those others that sold that do have basements, that square footage went up to about 3,200 square feet total. Now again, wide variety in this subdivision. So the lot sizes range from 0.12 acres all the way up to 0.96 acres. So my next subdivision is in Monterey, which is a little closer to E-Town. So it's actually right across the street from Valerie subdivision. She did Four Oaks um, or Four Seasons. This is kind of a big, this bigger house neighborhood. There's been seven cells in the last two years in there. They have been priced in that four, 410 price range to about 565. Um, and the big reason you see the difference in that is, is they've ranged from 1750 square feet to 2750 square feet. Big difference in houses. A lot of big houses out there. There's some smaller houses. Great subdivision. You know, a lot of houses have pools. You can go right down New Glendale Road. You can be in Glendale in just a few minutes. And so that's, um, again, just this really conveniently located neighborhood. Nice neighborhood. Just really nice high properties. They're all brick. There's no vinyl houses out in that neighborhood. So it's just kind of one of those deals as well. Neighbor, This neighborhood was really started building around the early 2000s. But the houses they built out there to me are the houses that you'll see that will be popular in 20 years or 25 years are just really pretty. Lots of kind of character to them, got some design, um, a lot of brick and stone. So just really, just kind of a timeless design, if you will. Up next, we have Whistling Oaks, which is right in the heart of Glendale, right off Mud Splash Road. Okay, and here we have Glendale. And right here is the Whistling Oaks new subdivision. So you've got the Petro Center, Glendale Hodgenville Road, which takes you right to the heart of Glendale. And then if you come up Mud Splash Road, just a little ways, it's right here on the right. And it's just one little cul-de-sac, brand new homes. 
So these homes started in 2021. They're all new back in here, just one little cul-de-sac. And they've ranged in the price ranges between 359 and up to 370. They're all on about an acre lot, which is awesome. And they range from 1688 square feet up to 1700-ish, but these are on no basement. Again, cost of new construction, you know, it's going up guys, just is what it is. But these are some beautiful new homes, really close to the heart of Glendale and very convenient to I-65. Okay, moving on to Andover Point, which is also off Mud Splash Road, just a little bit down the street from the Whistling Oaks subdivision. Now, these houses were built in the early 2000s. Most of them are brick. It's a very pretty subdivision. And these are all on an acre or more. Very desirable subdivision. And I got to tell you that people who live here don't move very often. So there's very few sales that go on in this subdivision. And when you find one, you got to jump on it because they're great properties to have. So these range in square foot from 1740 with no basement to up to 2290. Now some of these do have full finished basements, which obviously adds additional square footage. So I did a little research and from 2020 to 2023, there really were only about four houses that sold in this community. So in the last few years, now 2020 was a crazy market, but even still, as it slowed into 20, late 22 <laughs> into 23, very few homes have gone up for sale in the subdivision. Again, it's it's nice, they have acre lots. People who live there typically are locals and they stay a while. But these homes that sold back in there ranged from 325,000 up to 430,000. If you see one of these bad boys come on the market, snag it up quick, you're gonna love being there. Now here's a subdivision that is just south of Glendale in a town called Sonora. Back to Glendale, just one more exit down to Sonora is Cherry View Estates. So basically you just get off the highway and come up through the little downtown area of Sonora and you're going to come across here past the cemetery and then this is farm here but this is Cherry View Estates and they're pretty well spread out. Cute little subdivision but we wanted to point out that one too because if you didn't maybe want to live you know northern on the northern side or into E-Town. Uh, maybe you wanted to go further south where it's a little quieter and um, there's a uh, lot more open space, farmland. Um, Sonora is a good area for that that can still be within Hardin County. Now, if you watched one of Jarrett's videos, you've already seen what the most popular thing about Sonora is, and that was Houdini the goat. <laughs> you can back up to one of his videos and check that out. I'll put a link in the description for you. Funny story, this goat that lived and spent all of his days entertaining himself right on I-65. He actually had a like full functioning Facebook page with thousands and thousands of followers. So if that tells you anything about what's going on in Sonora, it's not much, and you might really like that. So it's just one exit south of Glendale. And some of Sonora is in Hardin County and some is in LaRue. So if you're worried about schools, you know, you can talk to us about which property is where and where you wanna be. This is also nearing the central time zone line. So the time zone might change a little bit for you as well. Now these properties are on 0.7 acres to just over an acre. So there's lots of roomy space here. There's only four that sold last year, January, 2022 to January, 2023. And those ranged in price from 180,000 to 197.5. These are all three bedroom, two bath homes from 1,400 square feet to just over 1,500 square feet, and these are on no basement. Really affordable price range and very close to Glendale. This is a great subdivision, and I think you're gonna like the country quiet living. <laughs>
Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. Please like and subscribe. We try to do these every Sunday. If you're moving to the area and you're coming with uh, with the army, or you're coming with four, or you're coming with some some you know one of the other companies in town, please reach out and give us a call. We love to help you. We help people buy and sell houses every day. If you want more information on Glendale, please check out Valerie's video on Glendale. There's a link in the description. It's a really kind of a cool little town, so you should definitely check that out, especially if you're coming here for Ford and it's where you're going to be and you want to give it a good look. So thanks for watching our video. Like and subscribe. We'll talk to you next week.